Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to State of Woods Co. Today we're gonna take this old barn door and we're gonna turn it into this. That was embarrassing. We're gonna turn it into this. Whew. Glad that worked. The client's family has been on this land for 180 years plus, and this tobacco barn was one of the original barns built on the property. During a storm, it took a lot of damage, so the family wanted to rebuild it a little bit. So we were able to go get some of the wood and salvage it for a table built for them. Now, working with reclaimed lumber is not usually what we want to do, but this backstory for this family meant so much to us that we wanted to honor that. Now by the patina of this wood on the barn door, it's hard to tell what we're working with. So we have to just strip it down, get rid of all the nails and see what type of wood it is. I have to admit, this is not my favorite part, but knowing that this barn was built in central North Carolina, I'm interested to see what type of wood there is. Typically they built with whatever type of trees were on the property, which could be a lot of the oaks, poplars, pines, maples. But at first glance, I'm a little bit worried about what this is. That's fine. Yuck. This is long way to climb. Yuck. That cross member, which we're not going to use, is definitely pine. But let's see what the rest of it is. The end of this wood is all rotted because this was the part of the door that was closest to the ground. And so with all this rot, there's really not much I can do with it. So I'm gonna actually cut past this board so that there's a lot of good wood. Now, what I do wanna do is make sure that there's no nails in this vicinity over here. Now, this thing is super strong, so it picks up all the little nails that I did leave behind, even when it's not pointing right at it. So I've gotta be really careful and really sort of think about where nails could be and this thing's pretty clean, so let's go ahead and cut it. And yes, I know I am not wearing a mask, but I'm doing it because I want to smell what type of species of wood this is. But there's no better test than planing it down and really discovering what grain that is underneath there. And now I'm getting really excited because that does not look like pond to me. The greens and the purple hues in this wood really tell me that this is poplar, which is really common for Central North Carolina. Now that we have the wood cleaned up, it's time to get to the building process. We're gonna start by milling the wood at the joiner, run it back through the planer a little bit more, and then onto the table saw. Now this barn door is gonna turn into the table top for this coffee table build. So I'm gonna use Type Bond 2 glue for this glue up, and I only have a little bit amount of this wood, and so I wanna do this glue up correctly. I'm adding calls to both ends to keep everything flat and level. I'm trying to mitigate any type of twist in this tabletop because this is all the wood I'm gonna get. We took all the wood we could salvage from this barn, and this barn door is all that we have for the top, so there's no purchasing any wood for it. But now that the top's in clamps and waiting for the glue to dry, let's go pick through the rest of this. I just know something's about to crawl out of this thing. It's a lizard. Man, I'm scared. Rue, get the get the snakes. You know I don't like them. Don't get me. Get the snakes. Woo wee. Go, go get them. Go in there. Go in there. Go. Really? There ain't nothing there, is there? There ain't nothing there. <laughs> you little turd. Now that we've had the poop scared out of us pretty much, we're in here looking for stock for the aprons and the legs for this coffee table. Now we're gonna turn the legs out of some beams that we took from the barn, but now we're looking for those good apron materials. This one looks pretty good. Now with the tabletop out of clamps, it's time to deal with a couple of the big cracks and checks in the wood. We're gonna fill this with total boat epoxy. So I'm gonna tape off the underside and the edges of all of the sides of the tabletop 
so we can pour some epoxy and fill those voids. We're using Total Boat's high performance epoxy with slow hardener. This is my go-to epoxy for most projects, but for this particular project, it comes in really handy filling these voids. Now, even though we use calls, this wood is so rustic and ununiform that it's wanting to do a little bit of a twist, but we have a solution for that. I'm gonna clamp down all four corners of this table and because these checks and cracks are so deep and go all the way through the wood in some places, we are gonna use the epoxy to fill those voids and give that wood some strength and expand those cracks to where everything comes out pretty much flat. So in a sense, you're using the epoxy to fill those voids and give it some internal strength to help keep that board flat. We actually had some pretty good results with this. You'll see that here shortly. So now it's time to work on the beams that are gonna make up the leg. And you talk about some really old rustic looking wood. This wood, I thought, was a complete loss. I have never seen wood that had fur on the outside. This wood is rotten so much on the outside that it's really started to decompose and become a furry, powdery substance. It was the weirdest thing. But once you cut into this wood, I could not believe what I saw. This beam in particular was really old growth white oak. Now, the grain on this white oak was the toughest and hardest I have seen in my entire life. Yes, there are some worm holes and punky areas on the outside, but the heartwood was just as pure. But then the next beam that we cut, it definitely disappointed because it just happened to be old growth longleaf pine. Which for our coffee table build today, it's not gonna matter. The legs are all gonna be paint grayed anyway. So I am gonna paint over the pine, which makes me a little sad because I'll also paint over that white oak. So now that we have the beams cut down to pretty much the length we need, we take it over to the bandsaw and go ahead and resaw it so we have a square stock. We cut all the sharp corners off at the table saw. This will help with turning on the lathe, but it also adds a little decorative element to it that you'll see in the final legs. Now these are gonna be completely custom legs for this table, so I decided to throw some wood on the lathe and just start chipping away, and finally came out with a shape that I liked. And all we have to do is repeat that four more times. Now I did make a fifth leg just in case I had my measurements messed up, because I am no lathe expert, as you guys would see if you watch some of our other videos. I'm no lathe expert, but it's such a fun little hobby and I'm learning so quickly. But anyway, let's get back to the build. Now the pine was so easy to turn because it's such a soft wood. This white oak was hard as a rock, as I said, and so it was very difficult and it took probably five times as long to cut. Now it's time to do some more milling. This time it's pine again, but that's okay, it's paint grade. This is the wood that's gonna be used for the aprons. It's a very minimalistic, simple design for the aprons. I cut a groove in the top of each apron to allow for a Z-clip, which will be used later on to attach the tabletop to its base. Speaking of attaching things together, I'm gonna use pocket holes for this project. Now, I don't normally use pocket holes on fine furniture, but this wood is extra fragile. I don't wanna use pegs. I don't have a domino, so pocket holes is just gonna be the way to go. Using a Bessie parallel clamp to hold everything tight while we put in a little bit of type on quick and thick glue and some pocket hole screws makes quick work of putting these aprons together. All right, so the table base is now constructed and put together. It's now time to move back to the tabletop, which is covered in epoxy. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so much sanding. Yes, yeah, so much exciting sanding. <laughs> this is a very opportune time to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss any more of these sanding sessions. And now once the top is sanded, it's time to square off one end with the track saw. I like to take the piece over to the table saw and use that to square off the rest of the sides. Now it's time to really see what this wood is made of. So I mixed up some Minwax stain to custom match what the customer had in mind. And I basically just brushed it all on and then rubbed it off as needed to get that look that I was really going for. Now the family wanted this table to look antiqued, almost like it's been in the family for 180 years. So I went with an antique painted look. I applied some General Finishes milk paint over the top of the stain layer and that will also get painted over with white. We're gonna do a 
rustic etching, sanding, detailing, characteristic adding effect to it. However you want to say it. We're going to rough it up a little bit. And this is one part you cannot mess up. You may can go overboard a little bit, but you can't mess up. So I grabbed a razor blade. I grabbed a sanding mop from Clinkspore. I sanded it with sanding blocks. I used all kinds of pieces of equipment just to rough it up a little bit. I'm spraying Midwax's polycrylic as the clear coat for the top of this table. I like the way that it holds up to family use, to water rings, to moisture, to scratches, to just everything that a family can throw at it. It's time to put the base onto the table. And like we said before, we're gonna use Z clips to do this. So we make sure everything's measured out properly. We just get these little Z clips off of Amazon. I'll have a link in the description below. And it's a good way to attach a table to the base, which still allows for wood movement over the seasons. Well, the last thing I like to do is put my brand on it, sign and date it, put a little clear coat over the signature, and it's good to go. The history behind this wood and the story behind this table is really what makes this an exciting project. Oh man, I am so happy with how this table came out. This is unbelievable. If you remember exactly what we started with, this stuff was terrible. Fur all over it. You had no idea what was on the inside. But once we got into it, it turned out to be really good wood. I'm really happy with it. This, I don't want to deal with that anymore. If you had told me it would have been this nice with what we started with, I would have laughed at you. But anyway, I think it's gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed this build. Quick, easy, fun build that most woodworkers could do in their shop. Um, not too complicated, but yet it was really, really fun. So I think the client's really gonna like this. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. This was a fun one. I'm gonna leave you to some glamour shots and uh, I'll see you on the next one.